Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about you in the videos of the paid requests this time for Adam? Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, randomness, out of the blueness, re-reviews, whatever it may be, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box as soon as I get water and not lose my voice. But Adam, because I have talked about the first film, wanted me to talk about Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco in 1996. First one had come out in 1993. I didn't realize this was directed by David Ellis. Now, you may be going, who the hell is that? Well, sadly, the director has passed away, but I've been a fan of some of the stuff this guy's done. Because he also did Found... Final Destination 2, which is my favorite of those films, especially the whole vehicular accident craziness at the beginning. Extremely well done. He also did Snakes on a Plane, which I have fun with, despite the CGI snakes. I have fun with that movie in a B-movie format. I think it's entertaining. I think Sam Jackson is hilarious in it. And he also did Cellular, which I thought was a really good thriller with Chris Evans, Jason Statham, William H. Macy, uh, Tim Basinger. Cellular, I, I like quite a bit, actually. He also did Shark Night and some others. And again, Sally, he's passed away. Seeing interviews, seemed like he's a nice guy. I believe this was the first film he did. Now, in all intents and purposes, I don't know if you needed a sequel, but the first film made some money. So, again, a few years later, we still have a human family headed by Robert Hayes, who was in the first film. He was also in Airplane, Airplane 2, among others. And they're getting ready to go on a vacation to Canada, but they're going to take the animals with them. Now, the animals, you have the Golden Retriever, Donna Michi, who was in Cocoon, among others, he had passed away by this time, and he had voiced that dog, Shadow, in the first film. So because he passed away, they got another actor. I forget the guy's name, but he played Frank in Cliffhanger. He's a guy that, for some reason, is smiling while Stallone is trying to grab the girl, and she falls to her death. And he's like driving the line. Maybe he didn't mean to, but it always looks like Frank smiling. He's also the guy that Michael Rooker, the bad guys got him. Frank, run, Frank. And Frank gets shot up. So he voices the Golden Retriever Shadow at this point. Sally Field comes back to voice the cat. And Michael J. Fox comes back to voice the the other dog chance and pretty much the story is as they're going on this trip getting ready to get on the plane chance freaks out because once again he thinks these other people are with the pound he breaks it open he runs away the other two have to go after him they miss the airplane, they're lost in the city, that get back home. Now, first and foremost, the dialogue in this is really lame at times. One of the first things is Michael J. Fox's character. He's going to protect the house. He sees a butterfly, so he says, Yeah, you butterfly away. Because it's a butterfly. So instead of better fly away, he says, you butter fly away. And I'm like, I don't give a shit if this is a kid's film. That's stupid. Now, I don't mind the first Homeward Bound. This one I wasn't much of a fan of. I think it's definitely a step down for a sequel. The city doesn't really have much of an intrigue compared to the animals in the wild. Where you got bears and mountain lions or, or other type of stuff. It just didn't feel like the characters were in nearly as much danger. 
I don't want them to be in danger in real life, but I just meant as characters, they didn't really feel like they were in danger as much compared with the, the first one. Uh, they didn't really feel too out of their element, because, yes, it's a city, but they're still pets. It's still, like, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't see anyone to help you, there still gives a feel of isolation and it's up to themselves and it, it gives your characters a bit more obstacles to obstacles to overcome it's not the case in this and I really really did not like I, I love Michael J. Fox what he got afflicted with always sad because Back to the Future films, The Frighteners, Casualties of War, even Spin City, which I want to get that on. You know what? I want to actually check to see. I want to get that show on DVD sometimes, Spin City. I don't even know. Uh, fuck it. I'm going to write that down. Spin City. I want to know if that show is even on. It would have to be on DVD, but I don't know if there's like a box set. Because I want to rewatch that show again. It's been a while since I've seen Spin City. I'm going to check that right after this. So I don't forget I wrote it down. But. I really don't like his character in this movie. Because number one. It showed that he learned absolutely fucking nothing from the first movie. The first movie the whole deal was. Him realizing how important family is. And. How much does Jamie Kidd loves him? And he was a dog from the pound. He wasn't sure, but now he, he knows how much he loves his family. He loves his kid. And he is lovable to the kid at the beginning, to be fair. But then he's being overzealous and ruining a baseball game and all this stuff. And almost at a quick 180, without ever thinking about it, he just assumes, oh, they must be for the pound. Which is the same shit they did in the first movie. In the first movie, there's a scene... Where they're ready to be rescued as doctors, veterinarians looking at them, and Chance thinks they're from the pound, they're going to kill me. So they escape. But by doing that, the human family misses them, and if they had stayed, they would have been perfectly fine, and Chance screws it up for them. He does it the fuck again, as if he didn't learn a damn thing. So once again, he thinks it's the pound, and they fucking run off. And now they're lost. And even the cat, even Sally Field says, it's because of you, Chance. And the jokes in this, I thought were really lame. I didn't think they were that funny. Like, early on, I mentioned the Chance. Michael G. Fox's character ruins a baseball game that the kid is having. Well, there's other dogs at the game. And they are announcers. Instead of Tommy Lasorda, it's Lucky Lasorda. Instead of Bob Uter, it's Trixie Uter. And they're sports announcers. Not just baseball, sports announcers. And they're announcing the game. And I'm sitting there going, okay. Ah, I just thought it was like, okay, it's Tommy Lasorda, it's Lucky Lasorda. It's just, I just something about that just felt really lackluster and not that creative, kind of lazy. I will say one thing this film did is, I remember in the first film, I'm sitting there going, it's kind of weird that none of these other animals talk except these three. Not the case here, because all these other animals, or since I should say the dogs. Not that about it is only the dogs that talk. So there's only dogs and cats that talk in this universe to each other? Yeah, because actually no other animals do that. Huh. Go figure. Well, it's funny because there's a bit where there's a kitten and the, the cat, uh, Sally Field, she saves a kitten, but the kitten never talks either. So I thought that was kind of funny. But I was talking about the jokes, like the there's a joke where Chance gets scared 
when the plane goes over them and the camera pans and he pissed himself. I'm like, really, man? And then Chance doesn't want to rush home. He's like, oh, why? Jamie doesn't want me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really, dude? What, what was the whole fucking point of the first movie's journey? Now it says, yeah, Jamie doesn't want me. I don't need to go home. Like, you learn nothing. So the three are trying to walk around in the city. And there's these bad dogs. One of them is John Polito. Who I've seen a lot of other stuff. And all of a sudden, this other gang of dogs, including Riley, voiced by Sinbad, from Jingle All the Way, among other films. And I think there's a girl named Delilah, female dog. I think it's Carla Gugino from Watchmen and other films. I think, what, the one with Jet Li, I think she was in? Uh, you have this one that... He always duh, 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 because he's scratching himself with fleas, so duh, 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 duh. stuttering. Yeah, this Honda hound doll that sounds like Roscoe P. Coltrane from Deuce of Hazard. Well, I like my girlfriend, I yeah. Chance and this girl Delilah, they start falling in love. I could give a rat's ass. Or a left-footed titty about it. Uh, Sinbad warns them about this blood-red van that takes these dogs to the lab. And now you're thinking, okay, this lab, is it going to be a point where they find the lab? And they find what's going on with the lab? And they're going to maybe save all these dogs and be heroes? No. So that lab thing gets brought up and it never comes to fruition. So, well, did it, nope. And then the movie just kind of wanders. It felt like there was no driving force. Kind of, like in Homeward Bound 1, there was this always drive, this ongoing journey to not stopping yet home. Here it's, well, we're stopping to hang out with Riley's game. We're stopping because Chance is fucking with Delilah and he doesn't want to go home and... They see these seals who don't talk to them. So again, apparently no other animals talk to them except other dogs and cats. And they just wander around. And I don't care for Chance's character because I don't care for his motivation. I don't care for his selfishness. I don't care they didn't learn anything. He got them up shit creek in the first place by his own fucking stupidity. So it's not that it's Michael J. Fox, just the way that Terrence Ren is a fucking idiot. While Shadow and the the cat are trying to get home, at one point they save a kid. Kind of like in the first film, there's that little girl. Stay here, we'll get help. Here, the house is burning. Shadow guys a kid out, and the cat saves the kid's kitten. Which I find funny that of Riley's Dean, there's a puppy that talks, but this kitten doesn't talk. So again, it's like, so uh. Baby dog will talk, a puppy, but a baby kid won't talk. Again, it just does whatever the fuck he wants, I guess. And that's the thing, it doesn't really feel like they go into much obstacles. Again, the first one, it was... The porcupine getting on Chance's face, and the cat has to take it out. I did the stuff with the mountain lion, the stuff with the bear, who had bear cubs, and this ratcheted up. And here is kind of, you know, other than the two dogs, they didn't allow a fight for 30 seconds. Chance thinks he's going to do a diversion, but no one follows him, so he keeps running, doesn't realize it. He's too stupid. And then the others get saved by Simbad and his game. Uh, again, that meant that thing with the house fire that the sh shadow of the dog and the cat save. And then Chance gets caught by the blood red van. And you think it's going to be this big deal where he's going to go to the lab and they're going to go find him and save him and get into the lab. And they find all these animals, they get all these animals out. No. 
pretty quick pretty quickly they get to the van they chase the two numbstalls who hate dogs and that's all you know is they hate dogs why they hate dogs just very goofy very silly very imbecilic they bite them on the leg or the ass to pull their on you know their pants down they run off they get the blood red van into the water and then that's pretty much it they try to put some drama where Delilah like, where Sinbad is telling Delilah you're a street dog he's a pet dog you guys can never work it out and then she just accepts it going you almost got yourself killed Chance and I guess I'll be with this hound dog which the hound dog seems like a damn creepy stalker And Chance doesn't want to go home. He's sad. Shout and the cat go. And then they're chased by those two dogs again. John Polito. And I think the other is voiced by Adam Goldberg. Which I've seen in a few other movies. Uh, I, th I think the other dog is voiced by him. And Chance comes in. Fools them. Rolls them down because they're trapped in this thing. Didn't really seem like much of an obstacle. Much of a journey being lost in San Francisco pretty much they get home uh, Chance is sad Delilah changed her mind and went there Robert Hayes says fine we'll have another dog ends with a pizza guy which is actually played by Will Sasso from Mad TV and other stuff Will Sasso just the pizza guy eating the pizza and the movie's over. Ha ha ha. Chaz got the pizza. Oh my god. He got the fucking pizza. Free pizza. Was it? Free pizza. The movie just fucking sucks. It just... You don't feel that sense of obstacles that the characters are going through... You don't feel much of a journey for the second time around. Chance just seems much more of an unlikable character with shifty, not shit, but murky, like, motivations of you assume this when you learn nothing from the first and now you don't care about your owner. Like, you want, don't you want to make sure your kid Jamie, your owner Jamie is alright? Is okay? Is that hurt? blah 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 but you don't give a shit you give a shit about this lady you met for you know 15 minutes I did not much sense of danger from the other characters like the the two guys in the blood red van you never felt them as a threat you never did. I really like the two dogs you never felt as a threat. And the those two jamotes never thought as a threat. And those are the only two obstacles. Yeah, I guess the home fire which dog goes in, finds the kid, leads him out. That's it. There's really no build up of suspense. There's no build up of danger. And there's really nothing else in the city that they really have to deal with for you know something called loss in San Francisco in a weird way San Francisco seemed a lot a lot smaller compared to the wilderness in the first movie I know that doesn't make sense but the way it was done just it just felt like a less dangerous less exciting more smaller journey with a love story I don't give a shit about uh, Robert Hayes and the human family are just there to fill up the runtime. even the first one you had a little bit of Robert Hayes trying to get with the you know, cause he's new to the family uh, okay I know you don't think to be as your dad but then he's making these flyers and the kid respects that there's none of that for the human characters in this 
So it just felt like, okay, put him, put him in a city. We're in the country, put him in a city. First one made money, this tried to make more, this made, I don't know, about 30 million. And just... Really not much to, to talk about, to be honest. Not in terms of music, voice acting. Michael J. Fox, Sally Field, I guess, did the best they could. Same with the guy that's having to replace Don Amici. I think the dogs looked a bit... I think that Golden Retriever looks a bit different, because I swear... I could be wrong, but in the first one, Homeward Bound, the Golden Retriever looked more yellow. But here, he looks more red. Maybe that's just me, but... In the first one, he looks a bit more yellow, and here he looks a bit more red. The shadow, the retriever. Maybe just me, but... That's what it seemed like. Yeah, maybe it's just me. But anyway, with that said... Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Uh, like I said, the first one I don't mind. This one I thought was a really lame, unneeded sequel. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.